Before we go into our next section, which is solving quadratic equations, uh, I first need to go over another idea, which is when we square a binomial. So a binomial means two terms, so x plus 3, that's a binomial, 2x minus 5, that's a binomial. When we square it, there is a shortcut in order to do this. Now we could FOIL it out, but there is a shorter uh, method that you can use. And uh, we've done this a couple times this year, see if you can remember. You start by squaring the first term, so x squared, and squaring the last term, 9. And when you square something, no matter if it's negative or positive, it becomes positive when you square. And then you take the two terms, you multiply them together, so 3x, and then you double it, 6x. And that is our middle term. So going down here, 2x squared, the whole thing, would be 4x squared. Squaring negative 5 would give me positive 25. And then the key step, multiplying them together gives me negative 10x. Doubling them gives me minus 20x. This idea we're going to be reversing in order to solve some problems by a method called completing the square. Okay, whenever we solve a quadratic, quadratic is a polynomial with the highest power of 2. So when you graph it, it's a parabola. Whenever you solve a quadratic equation, you need to set one side equal to 0. So up here, this is a quadratic equation. It's already equal to 0. I'm ready to begin. Down here on this one, it equals 7. So before I can do anything, I need to move the 7 over and make it equal to 0. Now, before I start, this method is called completing the square. So let's look back at one of the things we just did. If I square a binomial, it follows a pattern. First one squared, last one squared. Then I multiply the two together and double. So, in order to do the reverse process, which is taking this and making it something that is squared, it is not right now. I could not factor this as x plus something, x minus something squared. I've got to take a look at the pattern that exists here. In order to go from here to here, I would take the square root. From here to here, I would take the square root. And from here, this comes out of both of these again, doubled and being multiplied together. Now, if I want to write, rewrite this one as something that is a square, I need to do a similar reversal of the process. First thing is to look at the first term, x squared. Take the square root of it. Well, that would be x. Now, I could take a look at the second term, the last term, and take the square root, but that's not going to be so helpful unless it's already a square itself. Right now, as it is, if you were to uh, try to uh, factor this, you would not be able to have something that is an exact square. So what the method we're using is called completing the square to try to manipulate things so it works. Okay, so the second term, if we compare this second term to that second term, because we can, we're gonna, we can do that. If I take this second term, multiply it by the first term, and then double it, I get that term, right? So let's do the reverse. So again, it was take the second term, multiply it by the first term, and then double it. So if I take the second term, I half it, going this way, then I divide it by the first term, then that should give me this term. So if I have negative 5x, half of that is negative 2.5x. And then I divide it by the first term. Uh, the first term right here is x. So all it is is minus 2.5. Now, let me re-go over that. It can be kind of confusing. Just like here, to get to that term, I multiply these together and then double. Well, to get back to this term, the term right here, these represent the same position, I would go the other way. I'd half it and then divide by this, and that would give me that number. Uh, but now I need to sort of figure out what I've changed. I, this is not the factor of this, because if you squared negative 2.5, you get 6.25, not negative 2.75. So these are not equivalent statements yet. Okay, so coming back to here, 
this statement right now, as it stands, if we were to write it out, would be x squared. Well, that's good because that's, that's what we have here. But negative 2.5 squared is positive 6.25. And then if I multiply them together and double, I would get negative 5x. So, as of right now, as this stands, everything matches except for the last number. The last number is the one that does not match. So all I need to do is add or subtract something right here to make these two match. In other words, what do I do to 6.25 to get negative 2.75? How do I go from a positive 6.25 to a negative 2.75? And the idea is some sort of, I'm going to add a number or subtract a number. Now I know the decimal sometimes can be a little confusing, but if you subtract, if you subtract, um, <clears throat> or if you find sort of the d distance between these two things, which is nine, if you subtract nine from 6.25, you will get negative 2.75. Now sometimes it might seem confusing because the 0.25 0.75 with the negative makes it so that this turns out to be a really nice number. If I subtract 9 from here, I get that. And you can go ahead and check that on your calculator. You go 6.25 minus 9. You'll get negative 2.75. Right now, this equation and this equation are the same equation. I know it can seem kind of confusing. Once again, if I square this part out, I get this. And then if I subtract 9 from all that, I get that. And so everything matches. This is the idea of completing the square. Now once I've completed the square, now I can go ahead and solve because I can add this 9 to the other side. I get x minus 2.5 squared equals 9. Then I can take the square root of both sides. So x minus 2.5 equals, now remember whenever you're taking an even root, you have to remember plus or minus. And I'm really close to getting to my answer. All I need to do is add 2.5 to the other side. x equals 2.5 plus or minus 3 well, because they're just regular numbers, I'm going to go ahead and do the plus and then the minus. 2.5 plus 3 is 5.5, and minus 3 is negative 0.5. And there we go. I know this is a complicated version, uh, but the, this is one method that we have for solving equations. It's called completing the square. Go ahead and see if you can try it on this bottom one. First, you have to move the 7 over. And then you got to make sure that you can take the square root of the first one. So you might have to change the sign of everything. Believe me, if you can do this, everything else in this lesson is a piece of cake. Mm -hmm.